What we're going to go through today is the Trimble CFX 750 operation in the Apache sprayer. So to start out, what we want to talk about is the home screen of the CFX 750, which is what you're viewing right now, pops up right away when you power on the unit. And a couple things about this screen. On the left hand side, I want to go through the icons and, and we'll get to the ones on the right when we're actually operating the machine. But on the left hand side, what we want to do is go through these icons so that you understand what they are and you understand what's going to happen when you press them. So the first one I want to talk about is this status window. What this does is this brings up our field name, our field area, productive area, coverage, nudge, and a few other attributes. Underneath that, or if we press the status button one more time, it gives us GPS information. So this is, tells us how well we're receiving GPS right now and what kind of GPS we're receiving. The next screen shows us that our autopilot is okay, that right now the system is disengaged, and we are on WAS GPS. So this is just giving us autopilot information. If we tap it one more time, what it does is it gives us a feature name, distance to, heading to. What that means is, is the Trimble equipment allows us to put features in a field. Whether you have a rock or a washout or a waterway, things that you need to pay attention to, this will give us the information to the nearest feature. Tap it one more time, brings us to our virtual tank system. So right now it's saying that I have 92 gallons in the tank and it's telling me that my area to empty is nine acres and just gives us some additional information. Tap it one more time and it, it goes away so it won't be on the run screen. These over arrows, if we tap on the top over arrow, what it does is it brings up our camera buttons. These are for external wet ag cameras that we can plug into the system and be able to view what's happening with the boom behind the tank or to be able to see underneath the sprayer, however you'd like to set them up. To get rid of those, we tap that over arrow one time, and if we want to get rid of all the status buttons that we see here on the screen, we can tap that button and it'll give us a larger run screen area. So next I want to talk about the settings menu. What this does is allows us to go in and change the vehicle settings, change the implement settings, and any other initial settings that were done when we were setting up the system. The next icon down is the view icon. We tap on that, it gives us a zoom in, zoom out, and then a trailing button. What the trailing button does is gives us a camera angle from behind the sprayer, if you will, so that it gives us a actual navigation type screen. We choose the red X or tap on the red X to go back out of that. The last button here on the left is quick access. What this is is for field IQ so that we can go in and, for example, tell it that we refilled the uh, tank. So I'll come in here and I'll tell it that we're refilling the tank. We highlight the button and choose the uh, check mark in the bottom right hand corner. So now you can see we have a current volume of 750 gallons. The yellow arrow that goes to the left will take us back out of that screen. So other things we can do in here is go ahead and change our sections the way they were set up. This should have been done initially. Rate setup is another button. Flush control, boundaries, and then enable pump arming, which we don't use, and valve aggressiveness, which is set up uh, originally. So once again, we're going to use that left arrow button to get back to the run screen. So in the upper right hand corner of your screen, one button that I do want to talk about right now is the field button. This is what allows us to go in and create a new field. So first it's going to ask us if we're done in our current field. I'm going to say yes. Even though we haven't done anything in this field and we just started the machine up, it does go in and predetermines what your field name is going to be by using a date. So we're going to change that. What I want to do is create a new field. So in this screen, I highlight the Create New Field button and use the check mark in the bottom right hand corner. First thing it's going to come up and ask us is what kind of pattern we would like. If we press the Pattern button, it gives us a nice example of each pattern type on the left 
as we scroll down the list. <clears throat> a brief description of all of our patterns here. Straight AB is what we're all used to with just an AB line in the field. The next one down is A+. Plus. What this is, is if we're going across the field and we know the heading that we want to go to, we press A, get lined up, and go ahead and um, it'll have a button that says use A+. Plus. We'll choose that button and it'll snap a line indefinitely um, no matter how far we want to go. The next one down is identical curve. For those of us used to the Raven terminology, that's the contour. So if we have a certain curve that we want to use, uh, this is where we choose that and it'll give us that identical curve all the way across the field. The next one down is pivot. This is pretty self-explanatory. If we have a pivot irrigation system, it gives us a specific type pattern for that. The next one down is headland. This includes our headlands in the field to give us guidance if we want to double up on those headlands and then um, allows us to set up a straight AB going across the field. And the last one is freeform. Using the Raven terminology, this is the last pass. So it's continually monitoring where you're driving in the field, no matter what you're driving around, and giving you a matched pattern to that. For today's purposes, we're going to stick with straight AB. Implement setup was done initially when we set up field IQ at 91 feet, so we're good there. It's asking me if I want to record a boundary. Yes, I do for this field. So what that's going to do is it's going to basically use the outside tip of the spray pattern as the field boundary. When I hit that green check mark button in the bottom right hand corner, it's asking me to confirm configuration. What this does is it brings up the client farm field event format. This type of format was kind of brought in by the software industry as a way to organize all of our jobs or events in a field. So what we need to do is make sure they're named appropriately. For today's purposes, we're going to rename the field by clicking on the field button and then choosing create new. We'll put our field name in here. Use the green check mark when we're done. Verify that we have the correct field name in the field window there. And use the green arrow when we're ready to move on. The next screen that pops up is record keeping. This allows us to go in and tie attributes to our event. Allows us to choose the operator, what his or her EPA license number was, and other information that you might want about that event. When we're finished with that, we'll choose the bottom right hand button there, the check mark again, and it takes us back to our run screen. So now that we're familiar with the CFX 750 screen, we are ready to go ahead and start running our boundary through the field while we're spraying with the field IQ system. You'll notice the field IQ master switch below the monitor. It's got four switches on it. Working from left to right, we've got a rate switch that bumps our rate up and down by one increment. We've got a switch that gives us rate 1, rate 2, or a manual system. And then we've got an automatic and manual boom shutoff switch. And then we've got our field IQ master on off switch. What we want to do before we start doing our boundary is we want to go ahead and turn the field IQ on. You'll notice that the virtual boom on the screen, now our tips are green on the outer edges. So what we want to make sure we do is this is going to be a boundary. So after I get done spraying, I want to take this shape file into uh, my software in my office. So if I choose to start a boundary, it's going to create a shape file for me when I'm done spraying. So we're going to go ahead and take off. We're going to turn our master boom switch on. You'll notice our boom, our virtual boom in the bottom of the screen goes active. And you'll also notice that we'll go ahead and now we'll be painting on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and run our whole boundary. Once we come close to completing our field boundary, we're going to go ahead and tie back in. And once we have that boundary completed, what we want to do is make sure that we choose the boundary finish button on the screen. We'll go ahead and tap that. 
It's going to ask us if we'd like to store this new boundary. Yes, we would. So that next time we come in the field, this outer boundary is here for us. I'm going to choose the check mark then. And it's going to save the outside of that as our field boundary. So our next step in spraying this field, what we want to do is go ahead and set our AB line to begin spraying our back and forth swaths. So I'll go ahead and get situated here so that we can run our straight AB line down the field. So once I'm set, I'm going to go ahead and set my A by using the map A point button. This puts a green dot on the screen which tells us that that is our A point for our straight AB line going down the field. Now we will go ahead and travel to the other end of the field or at least 160 feet so that we can map our B point. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to say that this is our B point. So we'll choose this B icon and that's going to set our B icon on the screen as well as you'll notice it turns our icon to that yellow. <clears throat> In the bottom right hand corner you'll also see the steering wheel is yellow now. That means that it is ready to go ahead and be used for autopilot so that for the auto steer. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to wheel around here just like this is the end of our field. Once we spin around, you're going to see that next AB line appear on the screen. Our steering wheel turns yellow. Once we tap that, the automatic, or the, excuse me, the auto steer takes over and it will now auto steer the sprayer to line up with that AB line and to go ahead and um, follow that AB line across the field, giving us a, a perfect overlap. You'll also notice once autopilot is engaged, it does switch to the navigation type view that gives you the horizon in the background. The beeping you hear on the screen is letting us know that our headlands are coming up and that we are approaching the end of our path. Once we get down there, it switches to the overhead view on its own. We get into our headland. Again, we grab the steering wheel to override the auto steer system. We spin around then. Until that next AB line appears, the steering wheel turns yellow. We tap that on the screen. The auto steer takes over and we can continue down our AB line across the rest of the field. So that gives you a rundown of the basic operation of the CFX 750 in the cab. What we want to do at this point is we want to go ahead and close out of our job. So once we're done spraying, once we disengage the auto steer, the field button reappears in the upper right hand corner. We can then tap on that field button. It's going to ask us if we're finished with this field. Yes, we are. We tap on that green arrow. It's going to ask us if we'd like to create new or select an old field. Um, what it's asking is are you um, wanting to select an old field that we've put in here manually or brought in through farm software. Uh, we are not going to. Uh, in this case, we'd move on to our next field. So this has been a basic rundown of the operation of the CFX 750. For more detailed information on how to set up or calibrate your machine, uh, you will look for those calibration videos or setup videos that are coming. Thank you very much.